And I'm honored to be here to talk about our works on PV redesign for recycling and circularity in Itri, Taiwan. And my name is Yi Jun Liu. And first of all, I would like to briefly introduce Itri to you. And the number of staff in Itri is 6,102. And the number of staff um, holding PhD degrees are over uh, 1,000. And the patent owned by Itri um, are over 30,000 cases. And here shows the organization of Itri. And you can see that there are six research laboratories and several technology centers here. And the group of this work um, belongs to material and chemical research laboratories. And welcome to, meet, to visit us when you come to Taiwan. And then um, I would like to talk about our works. As you know, um, PV modules are, are our green future, but the manufacturing of um, TV modules really consume many materials. And the installation of one gigawatt of PV modules would weigh 60,000 tons and could result in uh, 1.4 million tons of carbon emissions. And, uh, based on the calculation, the global carbon emissions could be up to 140 million tons. Um, and uh, the manufacturing of PV modules um, really have a, a significant impact on our environment. And we would like to um, analyze the carbon footprint of materials for a PV module. And the carbon emissions for a 300 watt PV module are 418 kilograms. And a PV module could be broken, into, broken down into several components, including solar cell, glass, aluminum frame, etc. And we further analyzed the life cycle of solar cell and found that it dominates the carbon emission of PV module, and it would be a good idea to use um, reclaimed uh, materials to reduce the carbon emissions. But the prerequisite of getting reclaimed wafers is to keep uh, the silicon wafer intact during the process of dismantling. But um, it is unlikely to get undamaged silicon wafer from commercial module because uh, during the process of pyrolysis, uh, acetic acid would be decomposed from EVV to form small bubbles. And those bubbles would put pressure on silicon wafer, leading to the cracks on them. Why does EVA trap bubbles? Because EVA was cross-linked and the flowability is poor. So our idea is to encapsulate silicon wafer in a the thermoplastic material which get fluidized under high temperature and can facilitate the gas venting. But currently available uh, thermoplastic material, reliability issue, and the, the most important of all, they are expensive. So our approach is to introduce a novel EVA thermoplastic material composite film. And here shows the design of our EVA a thermoplastic elastomer com composite film. And the silicon wafer is encapsulated in TPE. And during the process of pyrolysis, the thermoplastic material will soften and act as a buffer layer to protect silicon wafer from cracking, include indicating that the material should have proper rheological properties. And the EVA layer also provide good adhesion to glass and the back sheet. And the TPE layer can exhibit ex excellent water resistance. And when we talk about thermoplastic materials, um, the creep is an, is a, is a crucial issue. And uh, in our design, the strong bonding strengths between EVA and the TPE interface and optimize the bilayer thickness design could prevent TPE from flowing due to heat. And we conducted a simple test to see uh, if creep would happen. And we can see that um, the images before and after um, the high temperature test, 
there is no creep. So here shows how we reclaim materials from easy dismantle the PV module. First of all, we will remove aluminum frame and the junction box, and then the back sheet was also removed. And the, the module uh, will be uh, thermal decomposed in high temperature oven, and we can get the ribbon, cover, cover glass, and the solar cells. And through wet process, we can get solid so silver wire and high purity silicon wafers from solar cells. And we make a comparison between recycled products from both commercial and easy dismantled PV module. And for commercial PV module, the recycling approach is crushing and sorting. And through this approach, we can get low purity glass pellets and the low purity silicon mixture. So they can only be used for metallurgy or constructional material or even landfill. And for silver, due to the high cost of extraction and the precipitation, there is no recycling right now. And for easy dismantle the PV module, the recycling approach is pyrolysis and a chemical process. And through the process, we can get complete glass plate and which is still processable. So we can use it uh, for live application glass products. And also we can get a high purity silicon wafer and they can be used as solar cell refabricating and the secondary material adding for crystal growth. And finally, we can get a solid silver wire and it's also in high purity and it can be used for si silver block or high value silver compound. And here shows uh, the dismantling process with energy input and the product output. And from the table, the carbon emissions uh, for, from easy dismantled and uh, commercial PV modules uh, was analyzed. And uh, we, we can know that just through crushing and a sorting process for commercial PV module, the carbon emission can be up to uh, 24.5 kilogram, just a little bit lower than the pyrolysis and a chemical process for easy dismantle the PV module. But as I mentioned just now, the value of um, reclaimed products for easy dismantle the PV module is much higher than the commercial one. And uh, when we uh, and then we can see the table below. Um, here we analyze the carbon footprint of aluminum frame, glass plate, silver, and the silicon wafer, and compare them with the new materials. And we can found that um, almost all the materials uh, from reclaimed process um, has a lower carbon footprint than the new materials, especially in the case of silicon wafer. So in conclusion, We've developed an innovative easy dismantling PV module comprising EVA and a TPE composite encapsulant and a dismantling process. So a damaged glass plate and high purity silicon wafer could be reclaimed along with ribbon and silver wire through the process. The value of reclaimed products surpasses those from commercial modules significantly. And from the figure um, on, the, on the right, we know the use of regenerated silicon wafer and crystal growth material can reduce the carbon emissions by 25% and 20% respectively. And uh, this is my report today. Thank you for your attention.